Welcome to this sacred time of praising and praying together, of singing, speaking, and listening together, of being strengthened together in faith for service. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your Holy Spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. We pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O, o God, God of glory, glory your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. hand. Unite, Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The first lesson is from the first chapter of Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends the reading. We will read responsibly Psalm 68. Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let, let them vanish like smoke, smoke when, when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to His name. Exalt Him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is His name. Rejoice before Him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at, at the, the presence, presence of God, the God, God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of First Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, 
will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading. Hey guys, it has been so long since I have been able to see any of you that I decided today I was going to make some cupcakes that I could practice on so that maybe whenever we can all get back together, I could make a whole big batch of cupcakes and bring them so we could all have one. Well, I know that I have some of the things I need to make cupcakes. I have sugar. I know you need sugar for cupcakes. I have flour. Pretty sure you need flour. I have eggs, so I know we need those. I have cupcake liners, and I have a spoon and a bowl. I have all these things, and I know that I need all of these things to make cupcakes, but I have a problem. I don't know if I need two eggs or if I need five eggs, and I don't know if I need a whole cup of sugar or if I need three cups of sugar, and heaven only knows how much flour we need. So... I decided I would look at a book, and the book surely would be able to tell me how much of everything to put in my cupcakes. I have a dictionary, but I opened that up, and all it has in it is words. It tells me what all of the words mean, but it's not going to help me make very good cupcakes. Then I have this book that I found about flowers. Well, you know what? It's got some really pretty pictures in here, and I looked at some of those, but nothing in this book tells me how to make good cupcakes. So then I thought, you know, really, the book that I need to go to is a cookbook. The cookbook tells me exactly how much I need of everything to make cupcakes or cookies or all sorts of good things. And I got to thinking, that's kind of like we are. We know the things that we have. We know what God gave us, what we're good at. We know he gave each one of us special talents to use and to share with others. And sometimes we know what all of those things are and sometimes we figure them out as we go along. What we have and what we are capable of doing. But I'm pretty sure there is a book that tells all of us exactly what we need to do. There is a Bible for people who are younger, just like most of you are. There's the Bible that grown-ups usually like to read and they like to read from. But no matter which Bible you have, every one of them tells us the same thing. That Jesus came, he died for our sins so that we might have eternal life. And it tells us that every good thing we have comes from God. And God gives us directions in that book, in that very, very special book, that tells each one of us how to live our lives and share all of the things that we already have. Can't wait to see you all again. Here, come have a seat. Oh, finally. Hey. Wow, it's summertime, isn't it? Yeah. Have y'all been having fun? Yes, we've been hiking and swimming, but it, but it gets so hot and we get so tired. I love this thing. Oh, really? You would like to sing? It makes me happy, too. Me, too. Is everybody ready to sing a song? Yes. You know, I was thinking about everybody all over the world, and God mm. loves all of them. Let's sing a song about God and how he has the whole world in his hands. Okay? Yeah. Everybody ready? He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got my brothers and my sisters in his hands. He's got my brothers and my sisters in his hands. He's got my brothers and my sisters in his hands. He's got the whole In his hands, he's got everybody. In his hands, 
I think she might be. Either that or she's writing a song right now. So she we'll might be writing a letter to God. Maybe she is writing a letter to God. Who knows? It could be. That looks like uh, God words. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, there's a new song that I want to teach y'all. And it's called Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise ye Praise the Lord. Lord. Now, what is a word that we use when we are praising God and we're happy? What Hallelujah! Is, you got Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. That's the word. And another word in this song, praise ye the Lord. Do you remember what ye stands for? You. Yeah. You. It's, it's uh, language from the olden days. Ye and you are the same thing. So let's practice it together. This is new for all of us. And we'll practice it all at the same time first, and then we'll break up the boys and the girls, okay? Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise. It actually goes a little faster, so let's try it one time at a little faster, okay? Okay, we're gonna make it crispy this time. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Sing out! Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye. sing hallelujah hallelujah and the boys will sing praise ye the lord everybody remember that yeah okay get ready girls hallelujah 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 praise ye the lord hallelujah 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 praise ye the lord everybody praise ye the lord hallelujah praise ye you enjoyed learning a new song along with us thank you so much for uh, singing with us and we hope to see you very soon as I say every Sunday maybe next Sunday we'll be all together at Sunday school in the meantime we pray for your good health and hope that you have a wonderful week God bless you everybody let's say goodbye goodbye, goodbye. we gotta go hiking <laughs>The Holy Gospel lesson according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
Now we know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given them, that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The gospel lesson for today reminded me of a story I heard. It's about a minister who was a good man, but a terrible driver. He was a little vain. His eyesight was going bad, but he wouldn't wear glasses. One day he was driving on a curvy road, missed a turn, and went off into the ditch. A parishioner came along as this was happening, recognizing his pastor. He stopped and approached the car. Are you hurt? he asked. The pastor answered, No, I have the Lord riding with me. The parishioner chuckled and said, Well, you better let him ride with me. You'll kill him the way you drive. I wonder if Jesus was feeling like this about his work. You see, Jesus is at the point, the moment of no return in our gospel lesson. We have been hearing some of Jesus' conversation with his disciples in the gospel lessons for the last few weeks. But now he has concluded that discussion, and he is on his way to his death, resurrection, and ascension. There's a saying when we would like to listen to a private conversation. I'd like to be a fly on the wall. In today's gospel lesson, we are just that. We have the privilege to listen in on a par portion of Jesus' prayer to God the Father. There's an in-between nature to the gospel lesson. Jesus knows that he is leaving the disciples. They will now need to carry on Jesus' ministry without him being physically present with them. He knows they will face huge obstacles, hindrances, struggles, and persecution in the days to come. They are between Jesus' physically present leadership and their fulfillment as disciples to lead the church in witness and service. This same in-between nature is reflected in this Sunday of the church year because we are between Ascension and Pentecost. I think this is important to note because many of us are at in-between points in our lives as well. All of us are between our births and our deaths. Some are experiencing situations between the death of a loved one and the resurrection we look forward to in Christ. Between occurrences of abuse and the ending of that abuse. Between making a difficult decision and the actual doing what that decision requires. In these in-between times, we can feel uncertain, fearful, 
powerless, or even abandoned. But Jesus is praying for us. And this prayer is God to God. And we know that Jesus is heard by his Father. There are so many possible themes to pick up in this prayer. I think it's particularly important to note what Jesus prayed for. And it's this that I want to highlight, three of them, because they point to important characteristics about the church that are particularly relevant for us in our day and time. The first characteristic is that it is a church at risk. Jesus is turning over leadership and responsibility for the gospel to sinful and frail people. Many times Jesus has had to explain the meaning of God's kingdom and his ministry to the disciples. And time and time again, they do not get it. We have several examples of this. The disciples arguing over who is going to get the highest place under Jesus. They challenge and get angry with Jesus when he tells them he must be crucified and then raised from the dead. They fall away when things get stressful. The disciples run away when Jesus is arrested. Peter denies Jesus three times during the trial. Even after the resurrection, Peter decides to go back to fishing. And Jesus has to remind Peter why he called him. To be fishing not for fish, but fishing for people in Jesus' name. And Jesus tells him three times to feed and tend his sheep and lambs. You see, Jesus knows the disciples can be so overwhelmed that they do not tend to their calling. And so the gospel and church are at risk. And he knows we are vulnerable to this as well. Our energy, our time, our attention, and our schedule can be so overwhelmed that we do not keep to our calling as disciples of Jesus. And in this time of high stress and uncertainty of coronavirus, we can be overwhelmed by anxiety and fear and anger to the point that we cannot keep our calling as we would like. St. Paul in Ephesians 6 tells us that we are contending against the powers and forces of evil of this world. And these powers would like nothing more than to divert our attention and energy away from our calling to witness to and live as Jesus' faithful people thereby putting the gospel in church at risk. As one author has said, the church is in the world. The church must live in the midst of structures, power relations, and assumptions now operative in creation. The church is exposed and vulnerable because the church is in principle hostile to the community that trusts. The world is in principle hostile to the community that trusts and serves Jesus. The situation of the church is more exposed and vulnerable because Jesus is with God and is no more in the world. The church is in the world without the company of Jesus. This prayer is uttered over a church Jesus loves, but a church that is profoundly at risk. It belongs to the character of the church in the world to be profoundly at risk. Jesus prays to his Father, knowing the church in the world is at risk. The second characteristic is that it is a church protected by God. Even though the church is in the world, Jesus prays for our protection. 
Jesus is about to experience the death wielded by the powers working against God. Knowing what he is facing, Jesus prays that we be kept in the Father's protection so that we are not overcome by them. Jesus specifically says he is praying not for the world, but for those who are in him. And Jesus is confident his Father will protect us, so we will not be overcome by the world's powers. The third characteristic is that it is a church that is to live in unity as Jesus and the Father live in unity. This unity prayed for Jesus is not primarily organizational unity, but spiritual unity in the gospel. It is not some soft, fuzzy, warmed over sentimentality, but rather a commitment that though we may have different thoughts, opinions, and ideas, we are committed to each other because we are mutually committed disciples of Jesus. We are united in the gospel of Jesus so that even when we disagree, we still recognize one another as fellow disciples of Jesus, commit ourselves to forgiving each other, and remain united in witnessing to and living out the gospel of Jesus Christ. We live in trust of each other, that we are striving to be faithful disciples and witnesses of Jesus, receiving and giving God's grace through him. In times such as we are in, when we are frustrated that we cannot socialize and worship as we would like, and getting back to normal, seems to be happening too slowly for our patients. It is so easy to let harsh and unkind thoughts and words harm others. We may even question the sincerity and commitment of some in regard to their concern about faithfulness and the well-being of the community. But Jesus prays that we may be one as he and the Father are one. And this is important because of what the world hears in our words and attitudes. A few years ago in the Rocky Mountains, in the winter, a Roman Catholic priest was driving on an errand of mercy when he was stopped by an avalanche of snow that had come down the mountain and completely blocked the road. On the other side, a Protestant minister was driving in the opposite direction to make a sick call when he was stopped by the same avalanche. On the top of the snowbank, they found a solution. The priest used the minister's car to complete his errand, while the minister used the priest's car to make his call. Afterward, they returned to the snowbank and exchanged cars. The point? There is a reason to resolve, there is a way to resolve all differences and difficulties eventually if we are in Christ. Jesus prays that we may be one in our witness to the gospel so that the world may hear our commitment to God and to each other. Those powers of the world that are working against God would like nothing more than to sow argument and division among us because then our witness would appear hollow and meaningless to the world. Jesus prays for our unity so that we may faithfully speak and live his witness to God. This is the last Sunday of the Easter season. I like to think that the tomb was not empty that first Easter morning. Now, to be sure, there was not a body there. But it was 
filled the, with the words of the angel who announced the resurrection to the women who came to pour ointments on a body. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. This crucified and risen Lord and Savior prayed and continues to pray for us. He prayed for us, knowing we are at risk against the powers that oppose God and the world. He prayed that in the midst of great risk, frustration, and challenge, we would have God's protection. And he prayed that we would live together in a way that shows the world we have trust and grace toward each other and unity in witness to the gospel. In this, we rejoice that Jesus prays for us and that we know his Father hears his prayer for us and grants it. May we, this day and all days to come, be about our Christian lives knowing we are supported and protected by our Lord until he returns to take us to that place that he has prepared for us. Amen. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. 
He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of, your, of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Direct, redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. We especially lift up before you today Waldo Nienstead, Waldo, Paul Martink, Paul, Betty Holt, Betty, Jennifer Zimmerman, Jennifer, Arlen Negley, Arlen, Marcus Brazier, Marcus, Gabby Rivera, Gabby, Edna Weiss, Edna, Larry and Lenise Peters, Larry and Lenise, Paula Baker, Paula, Martha Shaver, Martha, Carol Welch, Carol, Tammy Browner, Tammy, Megan Birch, Megan, Brad Eilers, Brad, Chelsea Pig Flitcraft, Chelsea, Gloria Hamilton, Gloria, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and ensure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.